to the participants. Uh, I think I'm audible to you. Yeah, so let us start uh, today's session. So today's uh, session will be discussing on macromolecular structure analysis. Initially, we can complete protein structure methods of, uh, that is, we have totally three methods of protein structure prediction. Yesterday, we have discussed homology modeling. Okay, I just worked with a software, but I didn't show you the output. Today, I'll be showing you the output, and then we discuss about the other two methods of protein structure prediction. So after that, we analyze the predicted protein structures. Okay, so through validation, the validation, one such validation we can able to do with uh, assessing stereochemical quality of a protein that is done by Ramachandran plot. Okay, so about uh, the protein structures, validation, visualization, Ramachandran plot, all these things will be discuss, discussing it on today. Okay, so we try to complete protein structures and on tomorrow, we discuss about uh, small molecule structures prediction, how to go for prediction of small molecules. We discuss the other molecules, I mean, uh, other than protein molecules. Okay, so before going to today's session on protein structure, the left out uh, concepts in uh, modeling of protein structures and validation. Can we recap the last session contents? So what are the last session topics we have discussed? So what are the last session topics? Or can I ask you specifically, very good, Ketana came with the answers, protein structure prediction, that we discussed uh, five levels of protein structure prediction, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, but in between, there is one more structure, isn't it? What you have left? There are actually five levels of protein structure prediction. Very good. The answer is super secondary. So we have five levels, and uh, we also discussed about globin family of proteins. OK, the globin family we see in, uh, as an example for the structural similarity of globin proteins. OK, uh, even though the hemoglobin, myoglobin, leg hemoglobin, which is uh, a protein from legumes, the structure is uh, similar, OK? That is, uh, the uh, uh, structure of protein in plants and animals are similar in globin family. But the sequence alone, you can find variations. That is, more mismatches and gaps are found. And similarly, we have seen about uh, what are the different molecules we can use for structure prediction. Uh, that is, what, what are the, uh, uh, we can use computational techniques for predicting the molecules. We'll be discussing more about that in the uh, next session. And we have discussed about uh, bonded interactions and non-bonded interactions. OK, that is, uh, these interactions are generally used to calculate the total force. From the total force, you can calculate total energy. OK, and we also discussed about the types of mechanics, classical, statistical, and quantum. Excellent uh, recap from Ketana Biotechnology. And uh, we also discussed about uh, the pre-existing databases for 3D structured molecules. So we have seen PDB database, OK? That is the RCSP PDB. This is Center for Structural Biology Laboratory. This is having a PDB repository. Either it can go like www.rcsp.org, OK? So this is uh, one such URL. The other is uh, you can also go through www.pdb.org, OK? You can try like this. And we have seen most of the structures uh, we have uh, from the th 3D structures of protein start from tertiary. If you have a one chain or one domain, we call the tertiary structure prediction is sufficient. But most of the proteins have, most of the protein, few proteins only have a single chain. Most of the proteins have multiple chain. Then in that case, you go for quaternary structure prediction. So homology, you know, through the homology modeling itself, we can predict both tertiary and quaternary. That is based on the template. OK, if template has more than two domains, even for the sequence, whatever you're going to predict can also have a two domains. It means that you're going for a quaternary instead of tertiary in that case. OK, even though if you, you have fed a only one sequence. OK, now uh, we have discussed something related to what we uh, recapped in the last session. Now uh, let me go quickly on the Swiss model results. You remember, I have provided uh, my ID for receiving the results 
okay just i'm clicking inside so you remember what exactly did we predicted okay so i just gone for predicting my strap one strap one you know tumor necrosis receptor associated protein one okay so tumor necrosis factor receptor associated protein one, one of the important target for cancer okay so this is the protein i just predicted you know for this i have taken sequence from uniprot so my sequence i got from uniprot before that i just checked with pdb database i don't get uh, a 3d structure for this so i just got a sequence from uniprot and uh, given that as an input for swiss model okay in the swiss model i've given as an input and uh, you know the swiss model is going to use homology model of uh, modeling of uh, protein structure prediction this is one first model under this model you have to feed a sequence and you have to search for a template okay the template what i mean is a template pdb the sequence is a target sequence in fasta format or just the sequence alone the sequence and template pdb together can uh, use uh, for prediction of pdb i mean prediction of 3d structure for the sequence you know if we have got uh, a 3d structure for uh, my strap one we have two models model two and model one you know in uh, model two and model one so if, uh, if you want to search, if you don't know what exactly you, can, you have to choose for uh, further computation analysis check the important parameter like sequence identity the sequence identity here you got like 88.49 percentage okay first you have to check with the uh, my strap one how many amino acids are there and uh, we have to check with the structure uh, sequence amino acids so if you uh, compare the matches we got almost 88.49 percent but here uh, the sequence uh, similarity is less 78.53 in model one so this is one such uh, most important parameter to finalize which is the best one and the second one is to go for structure assessment you know the structure assessment is uh, inbuilt uh, with the uh, project software if you click uh, structure assessment okay default it uh, takes you to the project in the project it assess the stereochemical quality of a protein through ramachandran plot okay so through ramachandran plot so this is the structure of the mice trap one so for the model 02 and if you see the ramachandran plot okay you can able to see plenty of amino acids okay so you know how many amino acids are there in my strap one first i can take it to the my strap one then i can uh, so go to the uniprot you know how i taken the sequence i go to the uniprot in the uniprot i just typed uh, trap one and then i've gone to the mass musculus so trap one is uh, nothing but heat shock protein 75 hsp 75 so for that if you want to take a sequence click sequence here in the left hand side you have a so see here this is the total length 706 okay so uh, if you see the 706 amino acids are there in this the not just a 2d this is of course a kind of a 3d okay a, three, a kind of a 3d plot uh, but you can able to find 0 to 180 and 0 to minus 180 okay if you see this each and every dot is an amino acid you know if you uh, if you keep the amino acid i mean if you uh, if you keep your cursor you can able to find this is a uh, arginine 542 arginine amino acid 542 position so the angles provided are phi psi etc okay but we also have omega omega angle okay so for all this uh, amino acid okay uh, you have these two angles mentioned that is you going to we are going to find the position of amino acids through only two angles so uh, if, if you focus on three angles obviously it is a kind of a 3d but uh, now whatever you see is a kind of a 2d kind of a plot okay in 2d plot and uh, before uh, illustrating about uh, the assessing the stereochemical quality of our predicted protein let me take you some slides i can give you some basics then we can go to this okay yeah so what are the steps you have taken in homology modeling you know initially uh for the homology modeling 
these steps are run in background okay but uh, if you focus properly like you can able to see these steps by after fitting the sequence when you click build model so uh, these are the steps now you can see what are the first step you can find the first step is align the amino acid sequences of the target okay that is whatever amino acid sequence my step one sequence you have taken that you will be checking with uh, the target uh, pdb file okay you know the target pdb file obviously is i uh, most probably it is a human my uh, human trap one so the my trap one and human trap one sequences uh, are aligned so it's a kind of a pairwise alignment is done okay and uh, even if you find any kind of mutations even some based on mutations you can go for realigning okay predicting one second okay first i complete what is exactly happening on then i can tell you uh, about the mutations and why we have to go for predicting the structures even you know in human we just uh, try with uh, if you have structures for human trap one in x-ray crystallography or nmr they might have got these structures but if there is a mutation if there is no structure for mutated trap one of human you can still use this modeler for predicting the mutated trap one structure don't use the knife or wild uh, trap one whatever we call don't use the same sequence for predicting the mutation you mean one or two characters might have changed in the amino acid. so uh, amino acids of a protein so just change the amino acids alone and then you try to predict the structure so uh, defaultly uh, it takes the template human pdb of a uh, trap one structure and then it predicts with the mutation mutated structure so mostly uh, you know if you try with the human experiments if uh, you have for uh, wild proteins but you, you don't have for mutated for most of the mutated proteins the recently mutated proteins if you don't have a structure then you try this kind of protein structure uh, prediction uh, methods so first uh, step is aligning the amino acid sequences of the target. That is aligning my trap one with a human uh, trap one sequence. The second step is determine main chain segments. So what are the main chain? Like uh, in a protein, you know, we have motifs. So motifs are of uh, sequence motif, structural motifs, or it can also be a comparative um, motif. Generally, you have sequence or structural motifs okay so the trap one is of course uh, a target for cancer so it's a functional motive okay in trap one you have a important uh, motive which uh, gives you uh, related to the binding uh, and uh, so we have to know what are the binding sites of the trap one uh, so the binding site should not alter okay so that will be the main chain segments for your protein if you try to go for prediction of protein so you have to initially determine the main chain segments which you should not change from the template uh one day the other amino acids alone you can find va variations uh, so far and if you see the replacing the side chains of residues that have been mutated so for for example i told you for human trap one you have a structure but if you have a new mutation for a trap and protein and if you don't have a structure then uh you have to replace the residues okay you have to replace the residues then you can also go for prediction isn't it so that, that thing can all, all, all obviously done you know you don't just have the wild uh, trap one you also have few mutated trap one structures you also have few mutated trap one structures in pdb if so whatever a sequence you are going to paste okay that is something peculiar when compared to the already existing wild or mutated proteins in database then you have to go for pre computational prediction isn't it so in that case for whatever mutated sequence of trap one you are going to paste in the swiss model okay that will be checked uh, with a sequence similarity with both mutated trap one existing mutated trap one and uh, wild trap one if uh, mutated trap one holds more similarities then it takes uh, that mutated trap one as a template instead of taking wild trap one as a template you got it the best example i can provide for is for sars cov2 for sars cov2 spike like a protein you have hundreds of mutations okay uh you can't tell that uh, alpha mutated uh, spike like a protein is closely related to beta 
might it can also closely link, link with the delta spike like a protein if so if you don't have any structures for delta and if you have structures for alpha so obviously uh, if you want to predict delta it may take from the alpha when compared to beta or gamma okay so likewise so uh, you just check with the appropriate kind of a matches and uh, of course uh, it takes but uh, the main segment main chain segments won't change okay uh, only the side chains alone you have to you, it will be replacing accordingly and the fourth step is to examine the model and uh, examining the model is uh, to detect any serious collisions between atoms you know actually the, the swiss model is doing uh, doing the protein refinement this is what we call it as a protein refinement but uh, the algorithms what uh, we used in swiss model is not uh, uh, is not uh, precise so most of the uh, commercial softwares like discovery studio has its own module like protein refine like uh, discovery studio even scroid engine and other softwares also have an exclusive tool so if you try to predict structures with these kind of uh, commercial softwares you get more uh, 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 accurate kind of a protein structure when compared to the freewares okay but we also have a kind of an algorithm to refine the protein okay to avoid the collisions and the fifth uh, step is to refine the model by limited energy minimization you know the proteins uh, uh, fold uh, to get a proper um, uh, stable structure isn't it so if proteins fold to get a kind of a stable structure okay then uh, the, uh, the energy if you assess after folding you get the energy is minimized that is you get negative maximum energy okay before folding you get a uh, uh, positive i mean uh, not positive energy you get an energy but uh, after folding you get the energy is reduced so the negative maximum energy is increased during the energy minimization procedures so this is done to ch maintain the protein more stable if you maintain the protein more, more stable you can uh, take it uh, that protein as such for molecular docking or simulation etc okay so these are some of the fundamental concepts you have to remember. For this, what we have done, uh, we, uh, on yesterday, I told you, you just copy the phase uh, sequence of uh, the FASTA format. And you the first step is generally you have to search for templates after filling this essential details like title or image. But uh, um, you can also able to make it in a single step by clicking build model. If you uh, go for search for templates, you have to use two steps okay after you have to uh, you will be getting more uh, templates so default one template the best template is chosen but if you don't want that uh, template one if you want to use template two based on your requirement then deselect template one select uh, template two and now you have a build model here you have to click build model to okay so this is a two-step method this is a single step method so automatically take a default uh, template and it predicts the protein okay so likewise you can find two different buttons okay and uh, so i told you two-step method isn't it instead of uh, build model if you click template okay check templates you get uh, nearly 50 templates okay even the 50 is the input parameter default build you can also change the setting and uh, uh, if you want 100 templates even you can get 100 templates okay default it uh, fetch you 50 templates you know the first template what is present at the top is showing the identity percentage 100 and of course even the resolution is fine 1.8 and strong so either i can take this or this okay both the protein shows 100 percent similarity the identity so uh no doubt in that instead of taking this third protein they can either go one or two so one is taken in default so now we simply have to click build models so what i mentioned you have to build like this so after that uh, for assessing the quality you get a kind of ramachandran plot like this but do you infer something, any, anything from this? You just uh, we can able to infer that the amino acids of a protein, that are 706 amino acids or 705 amino acids of a trap one, are shown in this 2D plot, where uh, the 2D plot is pl plotted phi versus psi. Okay, but we don't know what is phi and psi, isn't it? So more about this we see in the next uh, slide. Okay, at home, something is uh, For the phi and psi, yeah. 
sorry uh, actually yeah now we can see this for the phi and psi you know uh the phi is generally uh angle you can find between n and c alpha and psi is generally the angle found between c alpha and c double bond o so phi is n c alpha and psi is c alpha c double bond o and we also have omega the omega is c double bond o uh, to the n h okay so totally we have three angles so instead of using three angles if we use the three angles we may get a kind of a 3d plot but generally we use 2d plot uh, for assessing the stereochemical quality so i what do you mean by stereochemical often i am using the word isn't it so before that also focus on this kind of an angles for each and every secondary structure alpha lx left lx c10 lx phi lx so you can find the phi psi omega angles are very isn't it omega is of course uh, consistently constant 180 degree for all the things but the phi psi alone because if you plot the ramachandran plot okay we are not taking this omega in consideration we just take the phi psi alone so uh this alone uh they uh they're fixed as 180 okay because of 2d plot and uh, if you see the secondary structure of uh, uh protein i told you the, the major elements are alpha helix and the beta strand alpha helix and beta shapes okay if you see this alpha helix okay few amino acids favor the uh, structure of alpha helix and few amino acids won't favor the structure of formation of alpha helix how the alpha helix looks like you can able to see here the helix is coming uh the helix is coming like this coming like this going like this going like this okay it, it goes like this isn't it so we have uh, either a left hand helix okay or we have a right hand helix so if uh, this is a kind of a left hand huh? if uh, it comes like this then it is the right hand okay so like a clockwise rotation anti-clockwise rotation so based on that we can have left uh, left hand alpha helix and right hand alpha helix now if you see this kind of an alpha helix you know uh we can able to find here in the bottom these are the most favored five amino acids but unfavored that's what most will be concerned so whatever is unfavored for alpha helix may these amino acids favor the structure, uh, uh, the beta structures, beta shapes. Actually, each and every amino acid have a propensity of formation of alpha helix and beta shapes. Okay, so uh, may these amino acids, whatever they shown as unfavorable acids for alpha helix, can favor, may favor. Okay, so we can have like that. But what is most unfavored amino acids? You know, the most unfavored is uh, 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 amino acid is proline and glycine so proline the singulator is capital p and glycine is c you know why these amino acids are unfavored because if you see this uh, alpha helix okay in the turns so in this end okay in this end you know the al uh, glycine i mean i can show you the glycine amino acid it's not that anywhere okay not there but uh if you see this uh glycine i have Okay, I just uh, I'll give you an explanation with this slide itself. So if you see the glycine, you know, uh, all these uh, three angles, that is phi, psi, and omega, you find all the three angles or uh, have a flexible rotation. So the N C alpha can rotate well, and C alpha, C double bond O also rotate well, and even N uh, C double bond also rotate well. So all these three angles, you find very flexible when compared to any other amino acids and compared to the uh, 19 amino acids and if you see the proline you know you don't have this omega angle at all so you don't have a rotation omega you have very restricted rotation with phi alone you don't have even psi rotation you just have the phi rot uh, rotation you know the reason behind why you have a single angle rotation because the proline structure uh, you find uh, a phi ring structure, a phi membered ring structure, where it won't favor uh, the other two angles rotation, only one angle rotation, that two restricted rotation. Even though you have only one angle, that angle is also not uh, fl flexible, it's also restricted. So this is the only amino acid where you can't uh, find uh, very uh, less rotations uh, with uh, a single rotation. 
okay if you see like this okay here in this uh, alpha helix okay in the bend in the turn okay wherever you can find this turn this turn okay if it is more flexible you know so in this region if you find glycine okay uh, you can't able to have a glycine here if you have a glycine okay then this uh, in this side uh, it may break the alpha helix is no, won't be a stable if it is more stable i mean if it uh, you find a glycine in the rotating in the turn region you can't find this uh, turn is uh, stable okay because of more rotations so instead of having this helix like this okay uh, helix can uh, have something like this the structure is not even like this it can rotate something see the, this line is not matching with this line okay so because you have a flexible rotation if you see here okay if you join this line and this line this line is in uh, is touching with each other okay so the glycine uh, can't be there in the turn and how about proline if you have a restricted rotation here instead of glycine if you have a proline i take a eraser so instead of a glycine if i take proline what is going to happen so the proline is not going to give any rotation even the turn you know you should have a rotation if you have one angle rotation that way restricted rotation you can't anticipate at all a, a, a either glycine or proline so these two amino acids are unfavored here the glycine or proline is unfavored in the turns okay this is how you can understand so other than glycine and proline what are the other uh, unfavored uh, amino acids you, you see even you can write an algorithm for uh, predicting the structure of a protein if you know what amino acids are favoring and what amino acids are not favoring the alphabetic if only if you know what amino acids are uh, favoring and unfavoring for alphabetic then you can obviously understand uh, the beta sheets whatever unfavored can may favor beta sheets or may favor coil coil or turns and loops so this is how we can understand these amino acids favor the other structure but these amino acids what is most common in uh, alpha helix these are, these are not mostly observed in beta sheets okay so alpha helix and beta sheets you see these are present in alpha these may be present in beta or loops or turns or coins so beta is the major structure so this is how from the alpha helix you can able to find which uh, which are uh, sequence of amino acids forms alpha which sequence of amino acids form beta so you know we, i take you to the promise and proton i can explain you further so you have find a uh, uh, phi versus psi angle isn't it i told you c and alpha and n uh, uh, c alpha c double bond rho and n c alpha okay these are two angle rotations phi and psi isn't it so that 705 amino acids of my strap one or present uh, in this uh, square uh, kind of a plot okay but this is not we can't tell it is a 1d because two angles are there of course and if you if i keep my cursor here you can see this is aspergin 290 if i keep a cursor next to that glutamine 641 see 240 640 the amino acid positions are varying but you know for during the folding okay may the 240 is uh, maybe close with the 640 got it so based on the folding only you can find but if you stretch the sequence this will be in the one line and this will be in the another line now even i can show you here what is the amino acid record loose and 5a see here this is aspartic acid 687 687 is close with the five uh, five or one amino acid position okay the same thing here also you can find how you can find in ramachandran plot and if you see this ramachandran plot okay uh you know ramachandran uh is uh, gn ramachandran he is the father of bioinformatics of india so i don't know still i'm astonishing uh, how he has discovered these kind of a property even though i'm a programmer i don't know how he made a such a kind of a beautiful 2d plot to identify the secondary structure of a protein you know the stereochemical i mean secondary structure okay so the secondary structure if you see the dark uh, dark green color region you can find uh, two, uh, three different colors isn't it dark green light green pale green three colors you can find 
uh, in this uh, square part. Okay, so if you see the dark green region, if you find amino acids, that is most flavor. And even if you find amino acids instead of dark green, if you find this kind of it, uh, the light green, still you can tell this, uh, of course, a most favored region. That is, these amino acids give a best structure for your protein. Whatever you predicted, so this gives a best structure. But uh, if you find in green, pale green, okay, not bad. So that kind of inference we can give. But if you see these amino acids, see here, what is this amino acid? Lysine 31. This is not present in uh, dark green, light green, or pale green. So this is unfavored. And this is also unfavored. That is 309A. So during the prediction, we may find few amino acids are not lying in the shaded region. So these amino acids are unfavored. Sometimes even the amino acids, you know, you can also find somewhere here. Here, somewhere here, on the outside of the square. Here also I can find, here also I can find. Okay, if you find such a kind of uh, amino acids, then even the amino acids are unfavored. So according to this, okay, Ramachandran plot, what you can infer, uh, the favored regions in the Ramachandran plot is 95.31 percentage. Out of 705, 705 into 0.9531, so that much uh, unfavored uh, amino acids are there. So amino unfavored, almost I think four amino acids, huh? four amino acids are unfavored. It says. And if you see uh, how to, whether we can use this structure for uh, uh, docking or simulation, so how we can analyze it, this we can analyze it using this data. If Ramachandran favored regions are uh, above 80 percentage, you can use the 3D structure for docking and simulation. But in some standard publications, they anticipate the Ramachandran favored should be 90 and above. So just because we have 95.31 percent, which is above 90 percentage, so surely you can use this uh, structure. You can use this structure for uh, a further computation analysis. Okay, so this is the inference of Ramachandran plot. You know the Ramachandran plot is majorly whatever I am telling, like a favorite, is uh, based on the uh, amino acid positions in the 2D plot of uh, psi versus phi, and majorly we account for these amino acids also, glycine and proline. You know the glycine and proline are the unfavored amino acid for alpha helices. So wherever you find the glycine and proline, you can find these are not going to form a base for a kind of an alpha helices. This is a glycine plot alone. So uh, if you have glycine of uh, nearly 50 amino acids, all these 50 amino acids you can find here. And proline amino acids alone you can find here. Okay, if you want to locate it exactly, you can find exactly, but general thing, all the amino acids are shown uh, in this general plot. And more about uh, the regions of secondary structure, we can see in this uh, PowerPoint, okay? So if you see this uh, Ramachandran plot, okay? Earlier, uh, the Swiss model is associated with ProCheck. In ProCheck, you get a kind of an output like this. If you try to import in PDF document, you get a kind of an output like this. But uh, we also find the favorite region for another protein, 91.7. So in our case, for my step one, we got around 95. So we can use that. And uh, to infer about the regions, OK, the, the dark shaded regions and light and still pale, OK, you can find the information from here. What you can infer from here? So this region, OK, this region, uh, if you find amino acids in this position, we call this as anti-parallel beta sheets. The anti-parallel beta sheets uh, is in this region. So if the amino acids are present here, we form the anti-parallel, no doubt in that. And amino acids found in this region will form the parallel beta sheets. So beta sheets are present in the top left quadrant. Okay. And if you see the collagen triple helix, the collagen triple helix is present in this uh, region. Still, it is in the top left. If this is the top left and this is the top uh, uh, right okay and bottom left and bottom right okay so now what you can infer uh, even the collagen triple helix is present here right twisted beta sheets is also present here other than parallel anti parallel you also have right twisted beta sheet another subclassification present in this um, uh, top left and then if you see in this uh, top right uh, quadrant you can find the left handed alpha helices are generally present in this region 
left-handed alphalases. If left-handed alphalases are present in that region, how about the right? Okay, the right-handed alphalases are present in this region. Not only that, even you can have three ten aliases, uh, pi aliases in these regions. Then yeah, next pi, next pi. Okay, something uh, here three ten pi. Okay, so what do you infer from that? So beta shades are mostly present in the top left, and uh, the alpha aliases we can find in the uh, bottom left. Okay, but you also find right-handed alpha aliases in the right-hand side. Okay, but here you don't find any other uh, uh, alpha beta, but still I think uh, we found something. Some kind of a shading, isn't it? So yeah, this plot, this shading is extend to here. May you find the loops, stones, coils here? Okay, in this region. Uh, you can't tell this in most unfavored. Okay, uh, the most favored are present in this region. The most unfavored is something outside. Okay, which is not present in dark, uh, light, and uh, pale. Okay, these are unfavored regions. And of course, even if you see, I don't know uh, what it can, uh, what it contributes. It won't contribute alpha, beta. So this is also an unfavored. So the most unfavored one, two, three, the blue color and the, this this color is unfavored. Okay. So through this only the percentage is calculated and based on the locations only the, the statistical uh, percentages are calculated and favored regions are represented. Okay, this is something about how to assess the structure of the predicted protein. Okay, so through Ramachandran plot. So next one, the, we discuss about uh, the uh, X-ray coordinates. So even one should know how the X-ray coordinates. So before taking the X-ray coordinates, I can also give you one more information. So whatever I I, I taken as a model to. If you see at the bottom, you can able to find here as alpha fold TB model. You know, uh, it, it didn't uh, check with the X-ray crystallography of uh, human trap one. I told you, no, we have only five species of trap one. Um, most probably the mice trap one can match with the template of tra human trap one. That's what we got now. But you know, it didn't take uh, the X-ray crystallography or NMR, but it has taken the computational predicted uh, alpha fold TB model. And if you see here, this is a crystal structure. I think this might be taken from the X-ray or NMR. OK, what do you infer from that? Sometimes, even when compared to the X-ray or NMR, the, uh, the gold standard technique established PDB, when compared to that, uh, even sometimes artificial intelligence deployed computational database alpha fold can give you the good results. Not in all the cases. In our case, we got the predicted model has given the good results when compared to this, based on the similarity, based on the sequence identity. Got it? So, OK, uh, this is something inside. Like while working on a project, one should also has to know whether what template you are choosing for predicting your protein structure. Now, let me take you like uh, what is happening on how the X-ray coordinates are converting the form of We know about that, isn't it, before going to computational prediction methods, you know, the most difficult task in getting a 3D structure of a protein through X-ray is crystallization. To get a protein crystal is very, very difficult. This is not a small molecule. The protein crystals, OK, generally start with uh, Dalton of uh, how many? Uh, 10 kilo Daltons to 100 kilo uh, Daltons, and sometimes more than 100 kilo Daltons. Kilo Dalton, so 10 into 1,000. Isn't it? The molecular weight is maximum. So if you want to crystallize, OK, when compared to small compounds, it's, you find more difficult. But if you can able to crystallize, then you can go to the next step, that is checking the diffraction pattern using X-ray crystallography. You know, even if you take X-ray, we generally we find the bones in our human body, isn't it? So based on the intensity, even we can find uh, the tissues also. So however, we use the X-ray okay, for uh, identifying the bone deformation. Okay, similarly, here the X ray, the same X rays with an intensity, we can measure the diffraction pattern of the protein. So, whatever diffractions you have, that is uh, black dots in the, in the white uh, or a gray color kind of a picture, okay, this has to be uh, uh, transformed to an electron density map. You know, each and every amino acid 
okay has a unique molecular weight and has a unique kind of an electron density okay so all the 20 amino acids has the unique uh, capability so based on the diffraction patterns this alpha will uh, automatically determine the electron density map you know for this uh, we are of course we are uh, using a kind of a computational technique called simulation so simulation is used to uh, to just uh, convert this kind of a coordinates to electron density and further the electron density map can be converted to a 3d structure model through again a kind of a simulation so you are using a software uh, to uh, convert these coordinates from one coordinate to another coordinate and another coordinate to the another coordinate okay the last final coordinate what you will be getting in the atomic uh, model is the pdb no doubt in that okay so pdb of course uh, is a protein data pack so the protein structures are available now as file name dot pdb okay so these are the steps generally happening on but if diffraction patterns are not good if the crystal is not formed well okay obviously one has to go again uh the refine uh there they have to get a crystal and refine the diffraction pattern and then he can go for checking the electron density and again he can go like that if you get a kind of a base crystal okay he can go for the maximum resolution uh he can discover a maximum resolution protein you remember on yesterday i told you if you predict a protein less than two and strong this is a high resolution protein isn't it the high resolution is dependent on how well you get a crystal so crystal is dependent on how well your protein is homogenized is up, uh, in the magma solution so crystallization concepts or uh, plays a very important thing to know about how uh, how the atom is present in unit lattice okay unit cell lattice so so many concepts are in crystallization okay so based on the crystallization you can find uh, uh, you can also get a structure with a uh, uh, high resolution if you do a proper crystallization okay now let me take you to the uh, other methods of protein structure prediction you remember on yesterday i was uh, explaining you about expassive observer where you can find the first method is the homology modeling and the second one is the threading okay and the third is the ab initio so first the swiss model we have completed now so how to use the swiss model how to assess the quality of a protein this is completed can we go to the next method called fiery okay this is uh, using a threading concept so for this we can go to the slides threading so for threading it is sir okay uh you know the it is sir uh here you have to feed an input like how you feed an input there in swiss model giving a fasta format of the amino acid sequence alone here you have to paste only the sequence don't paste the fasta format the first line around has to be deleted and the remaining line the amino acid sequence has to be pasted here okay or even if you have amino acid sequence okay just upload it better i i i prefer you to, to, to just paste it after pasting it okay now type your email id and give uh, a kind of an optional id for your protein to remember uh, your chop name after that you have to click enter so obviously get a kind of a protein uh, like however you get a uh, protein structure uh, with the swiss model the similar kind of uh, procedure only the sequence alone you have to create and you can able to build a structure but you know we call this as a threading we are not calling it as a homology modeling why so then what is the difference between threading and homology modeling if it is used for threading and the step is similar like just provide a sequence and getting a structure what is the major difference between homology modeling and threading so for this illustration we can find from it as a pipeline you know initially you are providing a sequence isn't it but in a sequence okay in a sequence if you find majorly four domains for example this is first domain this is a second domain and might be third and four four okay some four domains are there in the sequence so four important parts are in the sequence you know if for each and every part of a sequence okay and nearly some 10 template uh, the database is going to search for some approximately 10 templates so for this again 10 templates and for the third part of a sequence again 10 templates and fourth part again 10 templates. so almost 40 templates okay so 40 templates such as so 
in uh, formula modeling you know for a sequence okay it won't break any part of a sequence it take an entire sequence and it searches for only one template pdb but here it searches almost 40 pdb structures the part of a sequence you find 10 10 10 okay so almost totally 40 pdb structures are taken in together so now we are going to use a threading you know what is threading how can you understand threading if you have a large thread okay if you have a large thread and if you can be able to cut the thread into four pieces okay and uh, then you know whatever four pieces you get okay you intertwine uh, and you try to get a kind of a, a single thread initially you take uh, a sequence for a sequence you get a kind of a structure you know, nearly 10 structures are here and uh, 10 more structures are here 10 more structures are here but you know you are only one structure alone you have to check which is the best structure from the 10 structures present in the part of first part of the sequence and in these 10 templates uh in this part to in this part okay i mean this position to this position okay uh you might have got 10 uh, pdb structures but you won't take all the 10 pdb structures to form a single thing okay a single pdb you take only the best here so might you take uh, one based as a okay here whatever you take uh, a best uh, pdb as a b and here you get like a uh, pdb file as a c and it has a d now whatever structure you form finally whatever you model okay has this uh, three or uh, four regions a b c d together so now this is your protein structure what you have predicted got it so you're not going to predict with a single parent but you're going to predict with the multiple parent pdb files so this is the major difference between homology modeling and threading you know homology modeling just take a sequence uh, just uh, go with a single template and predict a structure so these are some of the intermediate steps you know if you have multiple pdb files go for a clustering and go for a cluster centroid you know in the cluster centroid you find more concentrated kind of a pdb structures if more pdb structures are present in this centroid so this is this is we take it as the best uh, template okay and whatever template you've taken from here you take it to the structure reassembly so here not you are not going to find a single pdb but you find some uh nearly some at uh, 10 to 20 pdb files okay and whatever per pdb files you take you go for lowest e structure okay go for e value okay go for a hydrogen bond optimization try to find a final model the best final model okay so whatever final model i told you like a b c d okay so this has to be uh, aligned further and uh, you check with the pdb analogy and you can also go for comparative model whatever final structure you predicted with the uh, the threading concept okay you can go with the comparative model you know comparative modeling is whatever structure you have predicted you have to compare you have to compare with the existing x-ray nmr electron microscopy you have we have seen that now so so many gold standard technique established protein so you have to compare the predicted protein with this gold standard technique proteins okay so this is how we can able to assess the computationally predicted protein quality is good or not not only the ramachandran plot even uh, the comparative analysis of predicted protein with the already existing x-ray so in our case if you see the mice step and i told you uh, taking alpha fold db is the best one but a uh, comparative assessment has to be done even with the already existing uh, gold center technique protein that is model one also okay so this is how we can able to find in protein structure prediction other than uh, uh, going for this tertiary structure prediction if you start with the primary structure uh, prediction okay the primary structure prediction can also be uh, done through uh, prod param tool present in XPAS e web server. In prod param, simply you have to paste the amino acid sequence. If you paste the sequence and click enter, you get an output like this. What kind of an output you can get? You get the physico chemical properties of your protein. So, what are the, uh, if you just, uh, I've, I've given an, a um, protein of nearly 1084 amino acid sequence in length. So, for that, uh, this is the molecular weight you got, theoretical PA is this. And propensity, I mean, uh, the amino acid composition, amino acid composition of that protein is mentioned here in percentage. 
other than that how much uh, positively charged uh, residues how many negatively charged residues atomic composition and molecular formula for the protein number of atoms extinction coefficient estimated half life okay and also instability index generally the instability index should be less than 40 okay if it is less than 40 it is more stable but most of the proteins you have more than 40 so that means it gives you the unstable structure so how much unstable you can able to find from the half life uh, so up to the mammalian reticular sites okay you can find up to 30 hours stable if it is an is uh, up to the 20 and up to the 10 for the e coli okay even based on the time you can find the stability index value and even you can find alpha aliphatic index hydropathicity index can be determined from prod param tool from expressive observer like however you find prod param you can also find a uh, similar kind of an output okay from uh, the EMBL EBI okay so you have a kind of a radar and through the radar you get a similar kind of an output feed an input and you get an output like that okay so there are multiple sequence uh, there are multiple softwares like uh, SOPMA okay SOPMA like however you find prod param uh, these softwares whatever softwares I have listed show similar kind of an output these are meant for predicting the Prior, uh, physical chemical properties of a pro uh, amino acids in the protein. It means that we are predicting the primary structures. I mean, the primary structure properties are predicted from this. Okay. So, related to the next method, Garnier Oscothor Robinson method. Of course, again, secondary structure prediction simply have to paste a sequence. Uh, instead of getting a physical chemical properties, you get this kind of an output. What kind of output you can get in car? You can get uh, from the sequence what can form coil. CCC is shown here, and helix is shown as HHH. Likewise, you can find in car four tool. Okay, which uses Garnet Ascot of Robinson. I told you SOPMA is a primary structure, isn't it? Not uh, SOPMA is used for still the same kind of secondary structure prediction. Like, however, you find GOR4 result. If you type SOPMA, and if you go to that home page, if you and if you paste the amino acid sequence, still you can get the same kind of an output. However, you got for GOR4. So SOPMA is actually secondary structure. Uh, mostly you use prod param, okay, for uh, determining the physical chemical properties of amino acids of a protein. Okay, GOR4, uh, what you can get? Alpha helix, you know, for this protein, 1065 uh, amino acids, uh, nearly 549 amino acids are forming the alpha helix. So almost 50.65 percentage are forming. Uh, other than uh, alpha helix, you can also find this protein is having random coil of 42.82 percentage. Okay, beta sheets are very less, 5.54 uh, percentage. So alpha, so alpha you know, mostly it can be a globin fold protein. You find most of alpha, but you also find coils, isn't it? But uh, so we have to check what exact protein it is. Okay, so likewise, uh, tied with HNN secondary structure prediction method, uh, hierarchical neural network methods. So if you paste a sequence and if you click the similar kind of an output, how you go find for GO or GO, you can find an output like that. And this is for SOPMA, okay, uh, self optimized prediction method. Okay, so even in this method, you can predict the secondary structure. So simply paste a sequence, we get a similar kind of an output like our own in the previous slides. For a tertiary structure, obviously go for uh, homology modeling through Swiss smaller or even threading using high tensor. Okay, even the tertiary structure prediction can also be done through the blast. Even through the blast, we can able to predict the structure, you know, how to make it out. So for this, you have to simply paste the sequence here. Either paste the sequence or you simply paste the accession number, NCBI accession number or gene and coil. Whatever you paste in the NCBI blast, okay, uh, default you will take a blast B because we are using a protein sequence, isn't it, for structure prediction. So uh, after the blast B, instead of database, uh, in database, instead of NR, defaultly, you know, in a blast, uh, you have a database called NR. NR meant for non redundant database. If you have selected nucleotide for a different application, default you can find NR slash NT, non redundant nucleotide. But for proteins, you default you find NR as a database. But instead of NR, 
I select it and I just selected uh, these uh, reselected protein data bank proteins. Okay, so it means that you are not going to do the pattern matching or pairwise sequence alignment with the sequences, but you are trying only with the 3D structures. You are going to check one, uh, you are going to the sequence similarity with the 3D structures of proteins present in MMDB database. Okay. So whatever uh, PDB files you find in MMDB will be shown in the, if you click plus, you can find in the template. So see here, so in the bottom, you can find the output. Okay, you won't get any kind of uh, accession numbers, but you got like a kind of a PDB files, 180TA, 180B. So we have different kind of four letter PDB areas there. So if you click here, you, it uh, just go take you to the template, okay, the most, uh, important template uh, is based on the based on the uh, so the first template whatever you find is the, the most similar kind of a PDB structure for the sequence when compared to the second and when compared to the third okay so you take the first template as the base template so this is how even the tertiary structure predictions can be predicted from the sequences like fiery okay fiery which we call it as protein homology protein homology analogy recognition engine okay so this also can can be used to determine the protein structure simply place the amino acid sequence give the email address job to, uh, description is an optional for you click quick query research you get a 3d structure okay so steps and fiery uh, you have these sub steps which is running in background okay second structure prediction by psa blast applying hmm model you know each and every uh tool uh this kind of uh steps alone vary here it is using the psa blast and it is using the hmm model okay and uh, also it checks the transmembrane you know predicting uh this structure is more difficult when compared to any other proteins if you find transmembrane proteins okay uh you can't uh, simply rely on the usual methods like homology modeling and threading can't go with a swiss model itser but you have to go with uh, special software. Even Fiery is one of the best software uh, to check the transmembrane. If you have transmembrane, I think even instead of Fiery, you have uh, other prediction softwares, commercial softwares, exclusively for predicting the structure for transmembrane proteins. You can try with it. Okay, but for the freeware, you can uh, for the transmembrane, you try with the Fiery. Okay, you get some kind of good results. And fold prediction can be done. And finally, loop modeling is done. Okay, if you give a sequence, you get this kind of notebooks. You get this kind of notebooks. These are the templates. You simply have to click the alignment and whatever structure you get, you download the 3D model. Okay, and uh, uh, you can use it for computation analysis. So it is, uh, I think I already explained all this. Okay, so till now, uh, I have explained you what are the different methods of protein structure prediction. Majorly, I explained you about the homology modeling and threading. Uh, and I also was explaining you something about uh, the computation, the comparative assessment, comparative modeling, isn't it? So whatever structures you predict, okay, can be uh, can be uh, homology modeling, threading, or ab initio. This is the third method. I didn't mention you anything about ab initio. I'll be completing it short. Uh, so if you predict any uh of uh, structure in any of these three computational methods you have to compare with xr nma that is gold standard to assess the quality of your protein so for this use uh, uh rmsc root mean square deviation root mean square deviation is what uh, the general calculation you use it to assess the quality of the predicted protein so for this of course in ab initio no you start with a scratch in ab initio protein structure prediction you start with each and every atom you study about the bonded interactions non-bonded interactions everything we take in consideration for ab initio you know in ab initio of course we take all, even all the three angles uh in consideration for all the 20 amino acids and of course we also use the ramachandran plot but you know what exactly is the ab initio in ab initio from the sequence you're not directly predicting the final uh for uh, quaternary 4d structure okay you are generally going to predict uh, by stepwise if only if you have a primary structure then you can go for prediction of secondary structure 
If only if you have predict the secondary structure, then when you can go for the tertiary structure. Even in the tertiary structure, you have super secondary structure. You can screen the candidates, you select the specific candidate, and finally predict the tertiary structure. And from the tertiary structure, you can predict the final quaternary structure, which you can visualize in the visual, uh, visualizer. So this is a stepwise process. The step, uh, the stepwise uh, pro uh, process you can observe in ab initial protein structure prediction. Unlike homology modeling and threading, directly predicting uh, the structure from the sequence. Okay, here you have uh, so many kind of a substeps. So if, if you complete two, you can go to the three. If only if you complete three, you can go to the four. Okay, so this is something about have an issue. And I told you already, whatever structures you predict, okay, the predicted, I, I mean, uh, can be from the homology modeling or a threading or a have an issue. You have to compare with the xa nmr that experimental structures okay during that comparison okay if you transfer this as atom one and uh, similarly the predicted structure atom is one for this and two two okay so according to rmsd okay root mean square deviation how can we calculate here in our case in this case i can tell you di plus one okay square minus di square divided by two because you are comparing two atoms, first two atoms in consideration. So this is how you generally use it uh, for calculation for RMST. Okay, so, so the deviation here is less. The deviation comparatively is less when compared to here. DA plus one length is more, and DA plus two is still more. You find a large deviation. So generally we anticipate very less deviations. This is okay, somewhat okay, when compared to this. This is not uh, expected. So the RMST value should be as low as possible. Of course, we expect less than one, but if you get something like 0 0.00, 0, something like that, this is the best protein structure you might have predicted. So RMST can give you the quality of a protein, okay? So which we can uh, able to find like this. Of course, comparative modeling, I told you already. So these are the steps, whatever you structures you predicted from computation, just uh, select with it. So this is the scheme uh, flow how to compare it okay and the best tool for going for the comparative assessment is cast tool using cast tool that is critical assessment of structure prediction you can able to assess the uh, quality of course through rmst okay and if you go for predictions okay these are the final slide on today okay the target uh, protein structure okay this is the super secondary structure you can find for a hypothetical protein uh, hemophilia influenza protein okay the target looks like this but fold prediction okay according to the uh Mursin, okay uh, has a slight deviation so see here uh this even though alpha and beta are similar you have alpha one this is alpha two alpha three alpha four alpha five okay you have alpha four alpha structures here also have four alpha structures if you have uh, beta such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, here also I have 7. Okay, just 6. Uh, but uh, here, if you see the uh, template of a known structure, the computational thing, you can have the 7. When compared to the uh, X ray technique, sometimes even the this one, okay, the computational prediction can also give a best result. This is what they were going to show this. Okay, so whatever computational predictor, just compare and you can check, okay, with the previous results. For this, CAS can be used, critical assessment structure prediction tool. Okay, so till now, what we have completed, how to go for uh, the other methods like threading and have been issued, and how to assess the quality of a protein using the plot, RMSD, and comparative assessment. Okay. I have completed my session. Any doubts you can ask me at present. Uh, what does it mean, QM, QE, QS, QE? You know, actually, these course, you have to check with the literature uh, of, of Swiss model. You know, in the Swiss model, you have literatures. Okay, oh, one has to check the initial, go to the Swiss model, go to the reference articles. References you find, isn't it? In references, you can find all this. Okay, kind of a probability scores. You know how the probability function, all these things you can find only from the publications. This is a probability source of predicted proteins. Of course, it uses RMSD in calculations. Any other doubts?
If no doubts, thank you very much for your patience and interaction. So on tomorrow, we can discuss about the other biomolecules uh, structures predictions. Okay. Have a great day to you all. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.